Um, this poem takes the work of Stieglitz um, as its subject matter. The speaker here is Alfred Stieglitz. He's speaking to his partner, Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, he took countless photos of her hands over the many years of their partnership. And this poem takes those photos of her hands as its subject matter. Your hands, Stieglitz to O'Keeffe. It's not only they're a pair of starfish wet on crumbled rock, or how they're older than you are, or that they stand for you. Fingers sometimes square as cocktail carrots, and others round. Fingers sometimes curved in benediction, woozy with grace, or flat and spread above your head. Two antennas calling down through ceiling boards and roof tiles, the next line you will paint. Cleft of tendon that lifts in your wrist, lifeline that hints you'll outlive me. Their fluted shape is the leaning shape you always paint, a drying conch. It isn't how they always find the light or how they're bronze, how they echo the ditch that forms by your clavicle, or how they possess, how they sneak from the fields of your sleeves like ferrets with a curious nose, how they're maps of the roads through the hills by Lake George, or how they are rakes, or how each claws his mate, saying, my love, my foe. No, it's how Holding the tree in even sunlight, they are the tree. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this poem is in two parts. It's a marriage proposal, and part one is the offer, and part two is the response. <laughs> Marry me. One, he said, I've known women taught from childhood all the ways to love a man further than reason. So he grabs his head in passion, scared he'll spill his brains. Touched bodies stitched of plum skins, held bodies shivered thin with fear and sickness all through sweaty nights. So near death they stink. You were not yet born when I learned for good what a girl could do and gently, with flattened hands, looking me straight in the eye. I'm not here for friendship. I don't want a lover. Take me to your small house and hang me like a shelf beside your entryway. Water me and feed me as you see fit. Give me a place to do my work and I'll show you the finest work of my life. Wrap your legs around me when the day ends and snore. There where trash trucks shake the wooden shades with loud harmonica calls, with your long hands to shuffle my hair and finger my toes, I'll show the world what I can do. Two, she said, I'm a white Siberian iris just past seedling in a vacant lot. Nobody knows how I got here, how to tend me, how long I'll last. I'm vulnerable to winds, dropped temperatures, interruptions, men. To love me is to watch me from the window of the tenement across the way, to visit me on Sundays, to send your prayers. Some things are so strange to the world and to themselves, they're best left to the seasons which will care for them in increments so small, they shuffle nothing, impact nothing, as far as men can see. Thank you. You don't have to clap after everyone. This is especially, this is especially a short one, so I feel like you just um, you you can s skip this one, but I'll 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 let you feel it. I'll let you feel it out. <laughs> the the end will come before you know it. No bones. I have no bones. 
I'm the windsock my neighbor forgets still hangs from his porch. You can see in the grain of its cloth where the color was once, and twice a week or thereabouts, without a sound, the evening air still lifts it. So I sometimes write poems from the point of view of points of view of different characters that I'm working with, and this is one of those. I imagine the speaker in this poem uh, being a woman who has lived in a retirement home for several years. My heart is a house where nobody lives. I wouldn't even know the way to make love now. If anyone tried, I'd cleave like the bulbs of a cell when it's splitting. If anyone tried, I'd separate beside myself. I was the one that everyone loved, yet ended up lonely. That makes me a miraculous feat of loneliness. They said my loneliness couldn't be done, and I went and showed them. In the world of loneliness, everyone knows my name. This is called Poem That Contains All Time. A sheep encountered a fisherman in rags near the edge of the world. Why, inquired the sheep, even now do you cast your line? The day is all but over, and the fish have learned to outsmart you. The fisherman spoke with a crack in his affable voice. Soft thing, he said. Even when the stream is free of beasts, when yellowed grass appears in clumps so thick the water can't loop through and fretting dries, the fisherman carries his tackle box to the dust bowl where the river ends, casts his line, unwraps his lunch, and sits. An eon is a lot of time to wait for a change in weather, but forever is a longer time and a single day with an unstrung pole to a man as old as I am is a broken watch, a swath of cactus needles, all time. Thank you. So I'm working on uh, a collection of poems that take uh, the lives of classical composers and um, their compositions as subject matter for poems. And uh, this is one of those. Actually, um, this next group of poems will all have those themes. Um, this is called Glenn Gould's Chair. And the speaker here is the chair itself. So this is the, the chair will tell you its story. Glenn Gould's Chair. He carried me from place to place, would play nothing without me. It wasn't that he knew I'd raise him only 14 inches high. A man he loved, his father, had made me for him. The world's too full of people, things, of chairs. Every year there's talk of something better in the new. But those who've never sat on something pulled for you from solid wood can't know. Only I can say how I was made, and I remember gingerly. This is called Six Marimbas, Steve Rank. So in this piece, um, a piece of music speaks for itself. So, um, if you've never seen this piece played, um, a marimba looks like a giant xylophone, and this piece is played on two rows of three xylophones. Uh, it's quite amazing to watch uh, these six percussionists play this piece. Um, so, in this uh, in this poem, the piece will speak for itself. Six marimbas, Steve Reich. Certain even numbers split in two become a set of primes. 
Technically, they're even, but they're pregnant with indivisibility. I have always been like that. I'm linear, but cockeyed. All those lines lined up, but at a slant. You see it when you watch ensembles play me. Aren't they brothers standing at my six separate instruments? Don't they listen deftly to each other with such feeling, and with such feeling block each other out? To get to the end, they must fuse, but separately. It is like the question, must you marry yourself to marry another? Or can a thing that isn't already be made whole? Thank you. Castrato. The contemporary mind wants to measure him by what he shed, by what he gave. He did one thing so well, it was all things. He chose his work and lived it, was present as a man is only present when the ghost trails of the possible are cut. How simple were his nights compared to yours? Imagining the notes to come, or relishing again the notes just launched to earth, just spun. The truly flawless circle is the one that's etched invisibly by sound on air. Nothing drawn by hand of man, no matter what its tools, no matter how its pencil moves, is so complete. Hmm. Thank you. The composer Maurice Ravel is the speaker in this poem, and he's uh, speaking about one of his compositions. Maurice Ravel speaking about play of water. Mobile and precise, trilling but still crystalline, carved from glass with instruments of lead. One can't build the natural with naturalness. One cannot be water and behold it. What nature does without an edge, without a thought, I can do too, but glacially, and only very carefully, and at much cost. I must seem strange to you without a mate, living as I do amidst my wind-up toys, alone in this wedge-shaped chateau. You don't want what I have, but I don't want what you have either. Listen to it, drop on careful drop. What man who could write that wouldn't, even if it cost his life? Thank you. This is my last poem. This is the poem that I was lucky enough to be able to write um, after long consideration of the exhibition upstairs. I started several poems about several quote, quilts because there was just so much inspiration there for me. But ultimately, the one that stayed with me the most was a moment from the video that you'll see upstairs. If you sort of loop around, you end with a video where you get to see the quilters um, with their quilts telling some of their own stories. And the quilter, Joe Cunningham, spoke about how much he enjoys going to quilt with a quilting bee in Alabama called Gee's Bend. And he talked about how much he enjoys stitching on someone else's quilt and uh, the pure pleasure of the process of the craft when you're in that sort of quilting bee. And I was really moved by that idea that when you participate in a quilting bee, you become a ghost in a quilt that you don't have any ownership of, um, and that has a life uh, that you never participate in and you never see, but it's this great comfort to someone, and you were a small part in that. And that sort of invisibility and selflessness, I just find so beautiful, and it's such a beautiful part of quilt making and uh, and I just couldn't get it out of my mind. And if you get a chance to see that part of the video, you actually get to see 
a snippet of, of Joe with his friends, uh, who are all women, at Guy's Bend. And it's quite beautiful. So, the quilting bee at Guy's Bend. I'd like to sit and stitch a while on someone else's quilt mm -hmm. to sew among the ladies at Guy's Bend. I'd like to lay a loop I will not see again. I'd like to lean my face across a frame, watch my needle dip below the cloth as if the hand weren't mine. See that eel's head rise from that green glass, flip its tail and dive. I'd like to wonder what might move beneath. I'd like to watch the ladies at Guy's Bend read the starburst pattern with their hands, feel the pattern's end. I'd like to plant each loop like one gull's egg and leave the shore for good. I've tired out on owning what I sow. I'd like to see the ladies at Guy's Bend, solemn as their hands go through the pool, past the visible, down and down and throw each loop like blown wood to the sea. Blanket for a newborn I won't meet, wedding gift in cream for someone's niece, each clean stitch a chick to hatch in privacy on some consoling beach. Thank you. Yeah.